cycling 100 miles or a century is no small feat and it's an achievement any cyclist should be proud of. So today I'll be riding 100 miles or a century as it's commonly known as or if you measure a new money it's about 161 kilometres and I'll be taking you along with me talking about how to plan the ride, what to take with you, how to fuel your ride and other useful tips and tricks. Right I think we're ready. Just spent about half an hour trying to find my Garmin. Found out so everything's good. But hang on, there are a few things I need to mention before we head out. So the first thing is fitness. Obviously to ride 100 miles you do need to have a certain level of fitness already. But if you can comfortably ride about 50 or 70 miles, then riding 100 miles shouldn't be out of your reach. And if you're new to cycling, don't try and do 100 miles on day one. Slowly build up to it, um, increasing the distance every week or month. Being comfortable on your bike is also really important. Um, especially for longer rides, you'll notice some things such as your neck or your arms um, after just sitting on the saddle for so long they'll start to sort of ache and um, hurt in ways that they don't normally um, so making sure your bike's um, fitted properly for you and also you might want to have a slightly less um, aggressive position so maybe raise the handlebars slightly um, just so you're a bit more relaxed and not hunched over I use a commute to plan my routes just because I like the feel and um, use of the website. There's plenty of other, um, other websites you can use as well. If this is your first longer distance ride and you're slightly nervous about it and not sure whether, you, whether you'll be able to finish it, um, I'd plan a route which doesn't have too much climbing in. Or if it does have climbing in, have it towards the, towards the beginning of the ride when your legs are slightly fresher, um, rather than having the pressure of doing lots of climbing towards the end of the ride when your legs are knackered. Um, yeah, so, you're, so your legs will thank me later. So I use a Garmin for my navigation, um, I think I've got a Garmin 820, um, which you can put the route into, um, but you can use your phone or other GPS's if you want. But one thing I would say is if your um, device has the option, put it into battery saver, saver mode. Um, you don't want to be doing half the ride and then run out of battery and don't know how to get home. There's a few things you'll have to take with you when you do these longer distances. Um, the first one is just take enough food. Um, normally I take about one item per hour, whether that's you know fruit like bananas or bars or gels if uh, gels if you want to. Um, but yeah, normally around one an hour, maybe slightly more, um, just just to keep you going. And then of course you need to take plenty of water with you, or know places where you can stock up for water and uh, refill your bottles. Uh, today I took two bottles, two liters with me, um, which was just about enough. And then tools is also really important. Um, even, even outside of lockdown rules, um, it's still good to be um, as, as uh, self-sufficient as possible, having all the tools and spare tubes that you, that you might need. Um, normally I carry two spare tubes, just because, you know, can't go wrong. Um, and then also like a multi-tool and tie levers and everything that you need for your bike. Also some kind of pump or CO2 canisters as well. Check the weather forecast before you go out on these longer rides. Um, and just make sure you have enough clothes, whether that's waterproof jackets or leg warmers, arm warmers or warmer things or you know anything like that, just yeah, be, be um, prepared for being out all day. And then finally just, yeah, just general things like money, phone, sun cream um, and like a battery pack for your GPS or um, phone as well just to keep you going. And take lights as well if you think you're still going to be cycling when it's dark. Right, that's everything I've got to say, let's get back to the ride. It's been about five minutes and I've really gone into my little granny gear. Hunting three miles to go. Nice. I can't believe how quiet the roads are today. Um, here, in the, here in the UK it's still, it's still sort of locked down, but we are allowed to go for unlimited exercise, which is nice. One thing that's really important for long distance trips and rides is pacing. 
And I think that's where, I think that's where a lot of people struggle, or I mean, I do as well. Um, just feeling so fresh for the first like hour or so that you think, oh yeah, I can do this, do this pace for the whole hundred miles. And by the time it gets gets to like halfway, then your legs just your legs just completely give up. I always try and do the first, you know, the first third, just quite an easy pace. And there's the famous Hereford Cathedral. There we go, there's the top over there. Oh, steeper than I thought. Oh, my legs aren't used to this. I was going to wait till I got to the top. Uh, stop for some food there. But it's a bit better than I thought. I was so hungry. Mmm. Yeah, it's good to stop for food. Definitely needed that. Right, let's get to the top. Okay. Cattle grid. downhill but just uh, so much wind just constant headwind we've just done over 50 miles so 50 more There's so many hills. Definitely feeling my legs tiring now. Another hill done and dusted. I think we've done about 70 miles. There's 30 left. Oh, I'm telling you, my legs are, my legs are feeling it now. This is probably the lowest I felt. It's no energy, so I might have to stop in a minute and just eat some more food and get some more sugar in me. Oh. Yeah, I think all the oh, all the hills and we're going lots of small little roads, so they're all constantly up and down. Right, some food. Mm -hmm. 
Sometimes you just need to stop and have a five minute break. I thought I brought enough food, but I seem to be getting through it quite quickly. I think it should be fine for the rest of the day. careful when I was planning this route because whales are just literally a few fields away that way and I think currently we can't we're not allowed to go into Wales. Oh yeah it's a nice road. <laughs> it's so smooth. This is one of the Whitney, um, Whitney Tower Bridge. I think it's one of, I think like eight private toll bridges in, in the UK. But luckily it's free for cyclists, so that's all right. Smooth roads again. It's crazy how much, yeah, tailwind, smoother roads. Flat roads, yeah, just makes a massive difference. So close now. Just one mile left, I think. But uh, I think the GoPros. <laughs> Go okay, for a sort of run out of battery. I have to keep it, keep it plugged in now. Ah, I can't wait for some proper food. And I've only got a tiny bit of water left. So, planned that pretty perfectly actually. Ah, why do I live on a hill? Made it. <sighs> Haven't done that far in ages. It took around seven and a half hours riding time. Uh, it's actually just a bit over 100, it's 100, nearly 105 miles. 5,000 calories, nice. Oh, food, shower, water. Whew.